So I want to show you how to make a Zen tangle. And Zen tangles are basically uh, pattern work and they're very easy, very simple. Anybody can do these. Might take a few trials and errors to uh, get something that you're satisfied with, but there's nothing particularly difficult about producing a Zen tangle. And Zen tangles are traditionally done within a nine centimeter square box which is what I've drawn out here in preparation. They don't have to be nine centimeters squares, to be honest. You can do them in uh, any size square or any shape for that matter. Um, why they're nine centimeters, I don't know. But we've got a nine centimeter square here already prepared. And I just want to show you. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do this off the top of my head. Um, so I'm going to just draw... I'm using a fine tip pen here, but if uh, you don't feel confident enough to draw directly with a pen, then by all means, draw with a pencil. You can always go over this with a pen or some other material later on. So you can, the design that you make is completely up to you. You can just do it off the top of your head. It's perfectly fine. Or maybe you can reference something. You can look at patterns in nature, perhaps. Let's do another one of those. I think what we'll do first is we're going to put, a, it's sort of like a flower. We'll put a bit of a stem on that. Um, and let's do another one of these. Now, Zentangles have sort of grown in popularity because they're really good ways for people to uh, engage with an activity that helps them relax, reduces stress, tension, anxiety. They're sort of often talked about in the context of bringing about a meditative state of mind. I think, first of all, I'd say that I think that's basically true of um, just being involved in an art practice in general. I don't think there's anything particularly unique or special about um, doing Zen tangles that will instill a meditative state of mind. I think just doing an art activity generally will do that. Um, but I would question whether this type of activity does indeed instill a meditative state of mind. Relaxing it certainly is de-stressing it certainly is but is it a meditative state i think it does require some understanding of what a true meditative state is um, you know it's very easy to engage in a drawing process and at the same time have your mind wandering thinking about other things Worrying about what you're going to do tomorrow or what happened yesterday. Or getting excited about something you're doing next week. All of that is eminently possible while you're engaging in a drawing activity like a Zen tangle. And if that's what's happening with your mind, you are absolutely not in any sense whatsoever in a meditative state. So I think... It does require at least some understanding of what of what that means. What does that mean to be in a meditative state? 
Well, it doesn't mean emptying your mind. It doesn't mean stop thinking. You're going to find that extremely difficult to do in any case. Um, but it does mean having full awareness. So when you're drawing, yes, you're very much fully aware of the drawing process. When a thought arises, you become fully aware of that thought. Um, perhaps a car goes by or someone says something to you and you become fully aware of that. You feel a breeze on your face. You become fully aware of that. So mindful awareness is something that needs to extend out to whatever sensory data is coming into you. And yes, it may well be the act of drawing. I can focus in very much on not only the lines that I'm making here, the shapes that I'm making, but I can actually hear. I don't think you can, but maybe you can. The sound of the pen on the paper. I can hear the clock in my kitchen ticking behind me. You probably won't pick that up. I can just about pick that up. So it's all within my awareness. So you can bring a drawing activity, the creation of a Zentangle or any other image in as a meditative device. But unless you have the context of what meditation is and how to respond to other things that might impinge on your activity, other sounds, smells, a breeze, you know, voices, etc. Are those things all distractions? No, they're not. You bring them into your awareness. They become part of the meditation in the same way that the drawing activity is a part of the meditation. Um, let's see if I can fill up some of this space here now. But certainly engaging in a drawing activity, engaging in producing Zen tangles. It's certainly a good way for you to become introduced to a meditative type of activity. You know, when you're when you're working on a drawing, there are there are lots of scientific studies now. Uh, increasingly, it's something that is being researched a lot at the moment um it's a you know an emerging field the field of neuroaesthetics um and increasingly within the field of neuroaesthetics it's being shown that the brain actually responds to a deep engagement with an artistic activity like producing a zentangle it responds in the same way as 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 it does in a meditative state. So from a neurological point of view, there's actually quite a lot going on. When you're drawing. So I'm just going to slowly fill up. This space. So, as I said, the patterns that you use or that you create. Just off the top of your head or you can, you know, go and reference something. If you see a pattern somewhere. Make a note of it and you can use it. Later in your own design work. wondering about the wisdom of putting these stems on perhaps I should have just filled the space with um, with the flowers so let's let's just um, 
let's just assume that I've filled that with my design now. So then what you can do, you can fill each of these um, spaces with patterns. So I can just perhaps just put lines in into some of them. A really good um a really good book if you're interested in exploring the impacts of drawing artistic activity across the arts in fact not just drawing but music and theater and dance etc if you're interested in how engaging in an artistic activity impacts the brain there's a fantastic book called uh, the brain on art can't quite remember the author's name at the moment um, but if you if you google the brain on art a wonderful book well worth reading if you're interested in how the brain responds to artistic activity So you can just fill up, fill these spaces with uh, whatever patterns you want. You might want to use um, lots of little circles. And as I said, you can apply colour to this. Or you can just leave it as a black and white design. Uh, what else can we do? We could do zigzags. See, when you're working on a nine centimeter by nine centimeter square, you're actually working at quite a small scale here, so sometimes it can be a little bit tricky with fine pattern work if you're working on a bigger size it might be a little bit easier for you so we're just filling this in and you know we could even have some areas that are just solid black or whatever color you're working in I might want to uh, let's double up these stems, give, a, give them a little bit of thickness. As I said, I'm sort of I'm sort of questioning the wisdom of putting these stems in now. I'm not sure where this design is going. With these in the way but I'm gonna to have to find a way around that I'll find a find a solution there's always a solution so these these as I said these things Zen tangles don't require any artistic active any artistic talent as such you know you can you just make them up let's put them you know I'm making this up as a go I have no clue what's coming next no clue whether it will succeed and if it doesn't succeed, that's fine. And it's, it's worth asking yourself, what do we mean by succeed? What does succeed mean to you?
one of the important things about producing a Zentangle is to enjoy the process. It really is about the process. It's not just about can I make a pretty image at the end? You know, is it is it going to look attractive? Will other people appreciate it? That's not the process. The process is go on the journey, do some drawing, play with it, accept the mistakes. The mistakes are fine. Every time you make a mistake, you learn something new. So really, are they mistakes or are they concealed successes? Yeah, so just play around, play around with colour, forms. So this is coming on slowly but surely i'm not going to spend a long time now just finish finishing all of this while the video's on and just wanted to show you how to get started it's a bit of an odd shape that one um what else could we add into this i don't know what else could we add let's put some uh let's put some spirals into this Maybe smart spirals will look good. Maybe they'll look terrible. We'll find out in a second. Let's just put some in. It's all about the journey. And obviously... You know, if I was um, if I was sitting doing this on my own without the video, I wouldn't be talking. So it would become a much more relaxing, much more focused and perhaps meditative experience. Not so much when I'm talking uh, to the video, talking to the camera. Yeah, I think I want to leave that area free of spirals. I don't know why. I just feel like I want to keep them clear of that. I'm, I'm very reluctant to, to create symmetrical things. That's just me. I'm not a fan of uh, symmetry sometimes. I like, to, I like to challenge symmetry and see if it's possible to produce something worthwhile that isn't symmetrical. Yeah, I think uh, that'll do with the spirals for now. What else could we put into that? I feel like I want to do some more on these flower shapes, but I'm not sure what just yet. Um, I guess we could do some lines going the other way, couldn't we? How will that look? Mm, not so not so great i think but you know we try that's fine we'll leave that uh and we can just put some let's just put some circles in different sizes Don't have to be perfect. Just follow your intuition. It is all about working intuitively.
So check out that book, um, The Brain on Art. It really is, it really is a good, it's a good book if you're interested in the impact that art has neurologically. Um, there's a lot of good groundbreaking research going on in the field of neuroaesthetics at the moment. Uh, so there we go. So that's that's not looking so bad. I'm not sure if it's finished. Maybe it is. Um, we'll leave it there for now. So there you see, that's how we produce a Zentangle. Just do it off the top of your head. It's just pattern making. Yeah, doesn't require any particular artistic skill. We can all do this sort of thing. OK, thanks for watching.